Inventor and Fusion 360, mate, on face value, it's kind of like if Apple were to make and sell both the Galaxy phones and the iPhones. You've got two very similar products competing in the same market. Both are 3D CAD modelers, both operate within the mechanical engineering and manufacturing market, but one is unignorably cheaper than the other. And as much as Fusion 360 to some might still feel like it's the new kid on the block, wow, that's a, that's a dated reference, you, you might be surprised to hear that it's knocking on 10 years old now, yet still this debate rages on. Which one should I be going for? What's the main differences between Inventor and Fusion 360? Is Fusion replacing Inventor? So, as much as you might think you wanted, mate, you just wouldn't watch a three hour long video of me splicing out every single technical and functionality difference between the two of them. So just gonna set expectations here. I'm not gonna be saying, oh, guess what? Inventor's got a dedicated button here for creating a work plane through the mid plane of a Taurus. Where Fusion doesn't have that button, that, mate, that would take an actual literal lifetime. So I'm just gonna be keeping this to a high level. Here's the biggest and most relevant differences between the two of them that you need to know about. Starting with number one, localization. So let's just zip it all out, lob it on the table right from the off because a lot of what all this comes down to is about this and it all comes back Back around this, Fusion 360 is a cloud-centric platform whilst Inventor is your traditional local Windows desktop application. But to be clear, Fusion 360 still runs through a local desktop client, it's got an installer, it's got a desktop shortcut, runs as a program on your laptop or your workstation, but it's all about the files and the data. So with Inventor, any files you create, they're still safe to your local PCs, IPTs, DDBGs, IAMs, and so on, just like you would do with .doc files in Microsoft Word. And then it's kind of up to you where you save and how you manage them. With Fusion 360 though, anything you work on is saved into your personal or team cloud account and then managed via the built-in data panel. You don't really get to see your files on your computer to move or copy them around. And that's a bit of a deal breaker depending on who wants to use Fusion 360 because those files are in the cloud. Where? Number two product maturity. Now at this point, Inventor's had over 20 odd years of ongoing internal development put into it by Autodesk, driven by continuous feedback from commercial industrial engineering customers, and more at the point, all that time being an intense competition for market share with SolidWorks. And as much as you often hear small pockets of customers complaining that they wish Inventor would do specific something to their use case, why doesn't it do this, why doesn't it do that? It's kind of undeniable at this point that Inventor's peaked with what most engineering companies would need from a design tool. Fusion 360, on the other hand, well, it began life almost from scratch back in 2013 after seeing many of the actual same developers who worked on Inventor move over to the Fusion team to work on it, as well as lead designers and product managers. It charted a course and set sail towards a very similar direction to where Inventor was already at with the ever-growing and active Fusion 360 community all that time frequently asking for useful features found in Inventor to be added to Fusion 360 as they also jumped across to Fusion 360. And this would have presented Hoop Dog and his team with a bit of a dilemma because on one hand, yeah, you know, sure, those features would be useful in Fusion 360, but on the other hand, at what point do you draw the line on simply reproducing and replicating something that Autodesk have already done and currently offer in the same market? Reinventing the wheel would be the phrase to call upon here, but in summary, Inventor's peaked in maturity and at this point, year on year is being finely tuned and improved upon, whilst Fusion, you could argue, is in a state of rapid, fast-paced product development. And to be clear, both of these situations have their pros and cons. Number three, team collaboration and data management. So following said rapid development, Fusion now has many of the tools required for production output. It can generate 2D drawings and parts lists, for example, things that it just couldn't do back in the early days, which made it pretty much a no-go for any kind of serious, already up and running engineering companies who were thinking about what design tool to choose. So does that mean Reapwood Cruise Liners Incorporated can design the next cruise ship using Fusion 360? Well, yes, they could, but they probably wouldn't because Inventor has far better multi-user collaboration capabilities with its integration into Autodesk Vault, for example, which I've explained up here. And this lets a multidisciplinary design team collaborate on a single data set using in-CAD life cycles and data management controls. And this integration with Vault allows for downstream team data management, user control through permissions, API integrations, and much more, which opens up a high degree of operational flexibility. Whilst Fusion 360, it's got some capability for team collaboration, but it's limited at best. And even if you go for the Fusion team add-on extension, you're still somewhat stuck within the parameters and confines of the available feature set of the cloud platform with very little, if any, scope for a work how you want style of a setup. And I think Autodesk, I think themselves would concede that Fusion team 
as a platform isn't currently capable of catering for large scale design teams and the flexible requirements that come along with that. And if you're wondering where Fusion 360 Manage, formerly PLM 360, formerly Fusion Lifecycle fits into all of this, it kind of doesn't. That's more of a metadata management tool and doesn't really help with the multi-user collaboration at a physical file or a data management level. So does that settle it then? Is Inventor just outright for large teams and Fusion 360 for small teams, right? Does that settle it? Unfortunately not. It's just not that black and white anymore, but that does apply in a lot of cases. Number four, blue versus white collar. This is where things really do begin to fork off into fork off into different directions with Inventor and Fusion 360. Now, you'd be forgiven for assuming that given Inventor is the more matured platform, caters for the bigger design teams, arguably in more professional, larger scale settings, that it would have the bigger tool set when it comes to computer-aided manufacturing or CAM and CAE, computer-aided engineering. Let's start with Fusion 360. It's got a well-respected, powerful CNC machine toolpath generator supporting 2.5 and 3-axis milling, going up to 5-axis with the machining extension. It's got printed circuit board design integration, excellent 3D printing support, cloud compute-powered Nastran simulate solvers, and the renowned generative design AI-driven solver, which explores multiple manufacturing-ready design outcomes to spec based on your inputs. Inventor, on the other hand, Inventor kind of has none of that. It's got, it's got no integrated CNC milling or machine support, no machine libraries, no PCB design support, no generative design, a far weaker 3D printing workspace. So what gives? Well, this is where we have to make the massive differentiation between a manufacturing tool and an engineer's tool. Fusion 360 is primarily a manufacturing aid used by those who operate machinery, arguably the blue collar folk on the shop floor doing the real work, design and manufacture, whereas Inventor is more of a white collar engineer's tool used typically by mechanical engineers or product designers sat in a cozy office generating designs and builds materials, print or export, which then get manufactured by, I don't know, maybe their shop floor staff or a third party supplier, fabricator, possibly a third party using something like Fusion 360 perhaps. Of course, Inventor does have an absolute arsenal of capabilities that Fusion 360 doesn't have. Inventor's got iLogic, for example, for design automation. It's got iParts and iAssemblies. It's got the content center, tube and pipe routing, dynamic simulation. It's got the vault integration that I mentioned and tons more. But as with anything here, this blanket rule is of course not always the case. And I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that Inventor can interface with CNC machines. If you go for the Inventor Cam, it's kind of an add-on, completely separate program to the core Inventor application that you only get as part of the collection. But generally, white collar engineering currently leans towards Inventor, whereas blue collar manufacturing, makers, fabricators, small solo shops doing their own internal design and builds, Fusion 360 would be right up their street. And number five, system requirements. Often the biggest misconception when it comes to 3D CAD is that you absolutely have to have a mega thunderous expensive workstation just by default. Just because you've got 3D CAD, you use it, you're going to install it and you do some design work. It's categorical bollocks. Uh, but that's not to say there aren't rules and guidance though. Uh, this, I mean, this is and has been uh, entire videos on my channel. But both Inventor and Fusion 360 actually share the same graphics engine known as the Autodesk OGS or the One Graphics System. But contrary to much uninformed and inaccurate advice and guidance out there, the graphics isn't actually the bottleneck when it comes to working with 3D CAD. People just assume or think it is because 3D CAD looks complicated. CAD in actual fact is exceptionally computationally expensive on the CPU. And this goes for both Inventor and Fusion 360. And providing that you don't have less RAM as what's installed in my fridge, you're gonna be fine, mate. Generally speaking, Fusion 360 will be more forgiving on older and lesser powered hardware than Inventor would be. But that's purely due to the fact that, generally speaking, most people will work on smaller data sets in Fusion 360 than what would be typically worked on in Inventor. But you might be surprised to see the amounts of RAM when opened up and just running in idle mode. But from that point onwards, there's, there's no software requirements from Autodesk for the presence of a professional graphics card to be there or for 32 gigs of RAM to be there. From this point onwards, it's basically entirely down to what you're about to do in design, how many parts you're about to generate, how well optimized you make them. And like I say, in Inventor, that could be the start of a subsea vehicle with 100,000 parts. In Fusion, you might just be simply designing a bike frame or a small part to be crafted of the 3D print or CNC. So a reasonably light spec laptop could easily handle those designs in Fusion 360, as it could do with Inventor as well. But that's subsea vehicle. Well, that would need something more appropriate for the job and substantial. And just anecdotally, 
Rumor has it, there's this one guy who's basically solved all of that mystery with what workstation you need for Inventor and what's the best one to go for, because he designed some benchmarking performance tool uh, with an online leaderboard that just tells you what the best one is. I'll link the leaderboard in the description. You might want to go check that out if you're looking for a good workstation for Inventor. Excuse me. And number six, community. Granted, the community doesn't directly affect the application per se, but it can have a significant impact on your overall user experience with the product, the support you get, as well as potentially how Autodesk roadmap the products into the future. And being frank, the two couldn't be any different on this one. Fusion 360 has a vibrant, active, engaged user community across a plethora of platforms, likely due to the target market and the younger audience that it appeals to. And this audience are just used to going online as a first point of call, for getting their information, seeking help and providing it. And Autodesk have tapped right into that. They've done a superb job of feeding off that vibe in a relatable way. Regular online blog updates about Fusion 360 and all their communications go down really well with the community, along with a thriving network of content creators on YouTube. Take NYCNC, for example, or Lars Christensen. Lars, Lars. He had to put his YouTube career to one side as he's now climbing the ladder with an Autodesk, but Lars hasn't released a video on his Fusion 360 channel within the last 14 months but has still gained in that time over 30,000 subscribers. More than I did whilst I was working my ass off putting out 400 Inventor tutorials over three years on Autodesk Inventor. And he hasn't made a video. That's how popular Fusion 360 is online. There's a buzz around it due to its accessibility. It appeals to the young crowd and they're the online generation. Inventor in stark contrast and contrary to my own personal efforts over the years and, and many others to drive various community initiatives, Inventor really does struggle to implement any kind of community in the traditional sense of the word. Many do try to kickstart community events, like myself included, but they tend to struggle to attract any kind of wider interest. Like take Niels, he posts a Friday's picture on their thread on the Inventor forum. Absolutely no takers. My old Invusion card challenges was hosted at the peak of my tutorial game. Those videos have a few thousand views at this point after a couple of years, but at the time, less than 100 people entered those challenges out of 30 odd thousand subscribers. Uh, and those challenges were posted and pinned to the main Inventor forum up onto LinkedIn. At the end of the day, Inventor is a tool for work. Most people's involvement in it is limited to their employment and that interest expires at 5 p.m. Very few Inventor users want to spend their lunch breaks or weekends looking up Inventor tips or community activities, whereas Fusion, it's just a different ball game. It's a passion project for a lot of people. It's a big part of the 3D printing scene. It's accessible to everyone. That's where community thrives. And number seven, the price. Now I've intentionally left this one to last whilst trying to avoid weaving it into the discussion points so far, but Inventor and Fusion 360 are at outrageously opposite different price points. And I'm gonna start with Inventor and I'm gonna use US dollars as well for reference. That's what most people are who watch my videos. Now, if you're subscribing to Inventor on its own, no cam add-ons, no extras, nothing else, just the core product, Inventor's gonna set you back $2,190 per year. If you go for the product design collection of which Inventor is the headlining act, that'll be a cool $2,855 per year. Fusion 360, on the other hand, it's free. Yeah, it's free. In some circumstances, anyway. If you're just a regular Joe doing hobbyist, personal passion project stuff, non-commercial design stuff in your own home that you're not planning on selling, then it's completely free to use. It's also free to use if you're an eligible financially backed startup business and pass the criteria that order set out. And both Inventor and Fusion are free to use if you're in qualifying education. But once you do need to start paying for Fusion 360, the core product is only $495 per year, a mammoth gap to the cost of Inventor. However, Autodesk aren't stupid, and they've adopted the DLC model and offer a variety pack of extensions to enhance the Fusion experience as well. So with Fusion initially being free to literally anybody who wants it, and Inventor being behind a two grand a year paywall, you can kind of see how and why uh, the two have garnered vastly different online followings and community resources. Autodesk recently somewhat as well nerfed the free version of Fusion 360 and what was and what was a predictable and but unpopular outcome. I talked about that up here in a move where they said they never actually intended to make free card, even though Fusion 360 at its core was kind of promoted as free. Uh, but this mental project that they've had going for the last 10 years, which has seen as much if not more development than any other product in their portfolio absolutely had to start making them some money at some point and factually the free version would have been abused commercially by a lot of people but still the free version should be sufficient for most hobbyists with the transition to inventor 
a large scale industrial engineering being an easy enough transition to make considering a lot of the features and tools do share a common workflow. So there you have it. Those are the main high level differences between Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360. If you'd like to subscribe to either of them and help support making more of these videos like this one, then do please consider using my Autodesk store referral link in the description, which won't cost you a darn thing, mate, but it helps keep this channel going and gives me a referral kickback. And thank you very much in advance if you do that. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.